Hey everybody, welcome back. So glad that you could join us again this week for Midweek Encouragement. And I hope that what I share with you today will leave you encouraged, but also give you some homework to keep you encouraged. Uh, my cousin Dwayne, for a number of years, served as a missionary with Wycliffe Bible Translators. And uh, his work was with the Kirikiri people in Papua New Guinea. Uh, and the work that he did, the work that he accomplished there, is going to long outlast. It's going to keep going on because of what he started. It gained a lot of momentum and some great things are going on. Uh, the Kirikiri people, when Duane got there, was a tribe that did not have a written language. They had a spoken language, but not a written language. And about a thousand of their words described plants and animals, and then another thousand to describe a few other things. And Duane and his wife were there to try to learn their language and and then translate their language eventually to get it into a written form so they could start translating the Bible for them to be able to hear about Jesus Christ. One of the greatest tools that Duane and Helia had in their translation work was when they had a toilet flown into them. So they have a helicopter bringing this toilet in and it's coming down and all of the natives are shouting, what is that, what is that, what is that? Can you imagine three words can make all your work easier? Just wouldn't you love just three words would make your day easier? Uh, God is love. There's three words. Make your day easier. Just remember, God is love. Now, Dwayne was one year older than me, and uh, in the last few years, Dwayne has gone on to be with Jesus. But the work that he began and how you began in uh, Kirikiri land continues on. They were able to get the book of John completed for the people there. And I just hope that with what they began, that many people will come to know Jesus Christ because of that. But that one question, what is that? What a powerful question. And it's a question for us to think about when I throw out this word, love. Now let's look at those three words. What is that? Love, what is that? What a question. Go ahead, give me your answer. Type your answer there in the, in the comment section below. Do you know what love is? <laughs> uh, there was a song by the group Foreigners says, I want to know what love is. And I think that's the question a lot of people are trying to figure out. What is love? There was a lady from New Zealand uh, that started in the 60s. She, her signature became a doodle of a little girl as, as that she would send as she met this guy and uh, became in love with him and he became in love with her. The couple were married and later on that doodle grew into two people in a picture and that little doodle of two people in a picture became a syndicated cartoon strip. It was just a one little frame that was in newspapers all across the country and around the world, translated into several different languages uh, and in a number of countries. And it was titled, Love Is. And in this, this young woman by the name of Kim Caselli uh, began a career in writing these little notes. Probably one of her most memorable ones is, Love Is, being able to say, I am sorry. Imagine what it would have been like for Kim Caselli to create a one-framed shot of defining what love is day after day after day. Could you do it? It would be quite challenging. It would be kind of like Dwayne and Helia working at trying to translate the entire Bible with all of the various words of the Bible into a language that people could understand using just 2,000 words. I mean, Dr. Seuss was dared that he couldn't write a book using just 50 words, and Green Eggs and Ham has been one of the bestseller books of, of all that he created. Love, what is that? In the New Testament, we have a very familiar passage that I believe gives us an excellent definition of what love is. Paul wrote these words. He says, if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and I can fathom all the mysteries and, the, uh, and all the knowledge, and, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. 
Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish ways. Now we see a poor reflection as in a mirror, but then we will see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. So what is love? I don't think this passage tells us to be a doormat where people just wipe their muddy feet, but it tells us how to love. And the key word of this passage is that word love. And I believe that Paul gave some very definite definitions of what love is. I also believe love is, if we use it in a part of speech, it can be a verb or it can be a noun. It's a noun when we say that God is love, but it's a verb when we do as we're supposed to do and show love to everyone that we meet. If love were only a feeling, it would be, we'd be better off riding a roller coaster because we would be up and down and up and down, and then we'd want to hurl. Once upon a time, Chevy had a pickup truck, uh, a model known as the Chevy Love. I don't think it was really love because it didn't last. Most of them just rusted away, and some people have restored them, but it's just nuts and bolts. Yeah. The love of 1 Corinthians 13 is an unconditional love for everyone. It is the love God the Father has for us, and it is the love Jesus displayed when he gave his life for us on the cross. As we move into a more intimate relationship with God the Father, there is going to be this natural growing love for others as he has loved us. All through Jesus' life, we see him loving others. And I think that we, who did he love? He loved needy people. He loved creepy people. He loved widows. He loved orphans. He loved everybody. He lavished love on everyone. Even He even lavished love on us before the creation of the world. The love Christ demonstrates to us is what he desires that we do with everybody that we meet, everyone that we come in contact with. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 4, starting in verse 9, In this the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world, so that we might live through him in this it, in this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. God's love perfected in you will be demonstrated in the way that you love others. Think about that, that, that sentence for a moment. God's love perfected in you will be demonstrated in the way that you love others. I believe that that passage of 1 first, first John 4, starting verse 9 through 12, is something that we as believers in Jesus Christ need to grab onto, hold onto, memorize it, and implement it in our life. I used to imagine that if I would uh, just pull myself away from all worldly pleasure and just focus on my relationship with Jesus, uh, that would make me some kind of great follower of Jesus, and it would be what God desires. But the Bible is clear that God's desire is to create in us a passionate pursuit and love for everyone around us. Being a follower of Jesus Christ is not about isolation. It's about being more, uh, it's being more like a, a cup. And that cup is overflowing, and it's touching everybody that comes around you with love. I don't expect anyone else to fill my cup, but as I fill everybody else's cup, mine gets filled at the same time. God knows we can't love others on our own. It's only through him. On our own, we're selfish, we're prideful, fearful, full of ego, and inconsistent. 
as we renew our mind and are being transformed to become like him, we become agents of love and grace to others, even the creepy people and those people who um, we feel don't deserve it. But face it, we don't deserve the love that Christ has for us. We don't deserve what God has done for us. Love, what is that? Here at the church, we believe love is when I see a need, and I move to meet that need with my God-given time, talent, treasure, and touch. And I'm never offended by the cost or rejection or unmet expectations. I just want my Heavenly Father to be glorified in all that I do. Jesus said it this way in uh, John chapter 15, starting at verse 12. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that, he lay, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. James, the brother of Jesus, uh, wrote in the book of James, he said, true religion is to take care of widows and orphans. And then Jesus showed us in the separating of the sheep and the goats what true faith is and what a true relationship with him is, is when we love people, the creepy people, the imprisoned people, the hungry people, the unclothed people, the, the sick people, the hurting people. I think that pretty much sums it up. Love everybody as Jesus has loved you. So here's the question, what's holding you back? What's holding you back from loving others selflessly? I believe when we feel we need love, the greatest thing we can do is demonstrate love. Not just writing a note, but show that we love one another. If you're a child, I mean, you're a teenager or whatever age, being obedient to your parents is showing love. For us that are adults, showing love to God is obeying what he has commanded in his word. That's what love is. And, and demonstrating love to everybody we meet, it could be something as simple as a smile or sharing a cup of coffee. Because when we give, we're going to receive. Who is it that you could go out and show love to today, even doing it anonymously? Hey, I love you. And I'm glad that you joined us today. And may the love of God just treat you like a coffee cup that is overflowing as you go out and you love everybody. Bye-bye.